So my focus today is going to be showing you uh, the uh, system, a mid-range system, which is called the E540. Um, as I said, it's a mid-range system, uh, but it has a lots, lots of features uh, that, that, uh, that you will like. Okay, I'm going to show you the simplicity of use. Uh, but first of all, let me just show you when you actually take the detector out of the box, it comes pre-mounted on, on a bracket. Uh, this is the detector. It has a beam that comes out of here, and this is the detector slot. It's 30 millimeters in length, so that's almost an inch and a quarter. That's a huge amount of travel. So uh, rough alignment is easily done on this. You can actually see this one's got an M on it, which is for the movable machine, which we choose to be this side. And to mount it, all I do is hang the chain from the bracket, pass it under the shaft, and put it on the bed, tighten it up. Now, this exactly the same unit, but it's in the inverse, the beams out of the top. There's the long detector service, and you can see it's got an S on it, and that goes on the stationary side. And to do that, you just simply hang it off the bracket, put it on the pin, and we're on. Now then, the display is already on. Uh, as you can see, it's got uh, a few programs that we can use. This is shaft alignment. The next program is actually digital belt alignment that you need accessories to go and do. The next program is vibration. It'll take an overall vibration reading as well as a bearing condition reading. And we have a vol uh, values program. Today, we're gonna to focus on the shaft alignment in simplest. So here's our shaft alignment programs. And as you can see, We've got shaft alignment horizontal, we've got shaft alignment vertical, we've got multi-train units, so say uh, a motor that's driving a gearbox, that's driving a pump, and we can uh, do that. And we also have a software program. Okay, right now we're just going to go and do horizontal alignment, so I choose that. I'll just point out that as we do this, everything that you need to be able to do is prompted right here. It says enter the distances S to N and the yellow box highlights it. So, it's from the center of the shaft to the rod to the center of the rod. And I just have a little bit more than seven inches, so I'm actually gonna put 7.1 and put that in. Now, by default, it's just hard that to give me the sense of the coupling, but this is actually more like four inches. So, I just override it by pushing the four and I'm in. Now it says, M to MF1, which is movable foot one, movable machine foot one. And I've got two and a quarter, 2.2, enter. And the last measurement is the distance between the machine's feet, which is six inches. Now, I have everything that I need uh, in order for the machine to be able to take some readings and then calculate how much shim we're gonna have to put underneath. So, now when you see them in the detector service, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this to be in the center of its route, uh, of its uh, travel. And that's roughly there. Now, I'd actually be happy with that because I'm under the 20 thou. I don't need to move it any more than that. The other thing that's important to me though is this, these are built-in inclinometers and we have one on each head and they have to be within a degree, in other words, opposite each other in this plane here. So in order to make them that, that so, I have to just move the unit and that's going to be close enough. Now, simply tighten them up. and I'm ready to take my first reading. Now then, I only have to move this a total of 40 degrees, but uh, for me to do this, I'd like to take a full sweep. So a full sweep for, uh, is what I say is from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock to three o'clock. I move it to the nine o'clock position and I take my first reading. 
I now move it to the 12 o'clock position and I take my time, I'm not in a rush, and I take my second reading. I want accuracy, I want repeatability, I don't want speed. Bring it down to the three o'clock position. And I take my last reading. Now, I have all the information I need to, uh, to be able to go and do an alignment. These numbers on the top are what's important to me. Uh, you can see there's a huge amount of offset. There's only half an inch, a uh, half a thou per inch of angle in the vertical plane. This side of the unit's the vertical. It needs to be corrected with a 28th thou uh, shin under the front foot and 32 under the back foot. On this side, you can see it's horizontal. It's also reading live time. That's what the arrows mean. <clears throat> I've got three and a half thou of offset and three thou per inch. That's a lot of angle. So I need to correct that. The corrections are 20 thou of the front foot and 40 thou of the back foot. Now, in order for me to do this, what I would normally do is uh, put the shim in and then correct this, uh, correct the, uh, uh, the horizontal live time. Before I go to that, let me just show you one other thing. Under here, this is my toolbox. And if I come up, I can actually input a tolerance so I know whether I'm in spec or not. Now, it's based on RPM, as we all know. And 1725 is the most popular uh, RPM on the market. This is 1000 to 2000, so that's what I want to go. So I'll scroll down and I'll put it in. As you can see, it's out. Yes, the angle is very is, is okay already on the vertical plane, but everything else is in is in the red, so it's out. So what I will do, I'm going to turn it over this side so you can see it, and it's gone live. I'm going to loosen up my machine. shin under the feet. Okay, so now I've actually made the corrections uh, for the vertical plane, so now I need to be able to move the horizontal. Okay, so look, I'm going to purposely make a mistake. It's got 40,000. I'm going to push it the wrong way. It's not a problem. I stop doing that. I start bringing it the correct way. It's easy. Easy laser. Okay, seven, six, five, four. Okay, a little bit more. Oh, that'll do. And you can see the horizontals come into alignment, but you really do need to remeasure. So, this button here, I press the button and it prompts me. It says, Remeasure the coupling? I say yes. I may as well start right there. I can start anywhere in the rotation, so this is good at any place. That's one reading. to the top, there's two readings. I'm taking my time, three readings. And as you can see, it's perfect alignment. Again, this is the vertical plane. I've got a thou and a half. Two thou would be excellent. Half a thou per inch is, is excellent. In the uh, horizontal plane, I've got an inch and a, uh, one, one and a half thou, and I've got absolutely no angle whatsoever. So, I'm very pleased. But, I'm not finished. One of the things that we promote at Benchmark is MAD maintenance. MAD maintenance 
This is where we measure, we analyze, we act on what we're doing, and then we document it. So I've done that. I've measured, I analyzed it, I saw what we had to go and do, I took the action, made the correction, but now I've got to go and document. So under this button, I can scroll up to my file, and for simplicity, I will make this a B, C. And I save it. Now, it saves in two ways. It saves actually as a program in there, so you can reopen it and continue to measure. It also saves it as a PDF, which looks something like this. So we've got all the information that we need. We have our customer on the top. We have all the dimensions that we put in, and we can have our before and after measurements uh, as we choose. So you can have it in this format and save it as your for your history, and you'll be very happy.